Hello there, my name's Dave Allen, I'm good and geeky, and today I want to have a good application called Logsec, which is a pretty amazing application for creating notes and using it as a place for all your information and knowledge. Anyway, this is an application which in some ways looks quite similar to Obsidian. And obviously it's going to look quite similar as well to Notion and Rome. There we've got Rome, And then there's another application as well, which is called RemNote. So this is another one that's possible to use that does the same sort of thing. I'm not going to bother with this one because I think I've got enough with uh, all the ones I've tried already. So, And don't forget that you've also got the application called Craft, which I think is pretty. I think it's a great looking application. And one thing that's good about it is that it's a proper application and it is not an Electron application. The thing about all these applications is that they can do the wiki style linking from one document to one block in a document to another block or page of a document. Let's go back to the log sec. So if I click on this one here, JavaScript to constructors, I get a um, thing popping up in front of me or I can just click on it and it will take me to where I've been making some notes about JavaScript constructors. Now when you first start using it, you might feel a bit intimidated and confused as to what's going on and what you can do with it. And I felt that, and the same with Obsidian as well. But for some reason or other, I seem to get into LogSec a bit better than I did with Obsidian. And I like Obsidian, and I, I like LogSec even better. And probably I like Craft even better than that. But still, they've all got their different ways of working and their different uses. And the one thing about the um, Obsidian and with LogSec is that you get this graph sort of thing over here, which gives you a visual representation of your documents and the links going between them. So this one here, I'm looking at JavaScript constructors but I might want to go back to where it's been linked from or to and see all the other things that it's uh, linking and uh, I can see where my knowledge is going and sometimes when you build these things up what happens is you put all this stuff in and you make links as you go along and then at some point in time you think gosh look at there's the link between that and that I didn't realize that that was connected and you've got a light bulb moment happening let's have a look at it and see what we can do with it so the first thing to note about this application and it starts off with journals so what it does is it makes a new page for you every day and it's where you start doing your journaling and where you put your stuff in so in this one here on Wednesday I just got to start typing in there so uh, making a video and what I might want to do is I want to take that there and I might want to turn that into a link. So all I do to turn it into a link is press the square brackets twice. And that's going to give me a new page with linking to a, a thing called video. So now I've got a new page in there. All what you can do is you can start by typing in your two brackets like that there and start searching for something. So I could go for this one here and then choose either JavaScript constructors or JavaScript factories and go there and straight away I've got a connection. So that's one of the basic things about making a link there. And as I say, it starts off in your journal. And because it's a journal, right away, this turns the application into something based upon dates and makes it easy to use as an agenda, time organizer, project and task organizer. Other thing to note is the fact that this is very much an outliner. And the makers of the application recommend that using the indenting and outdating as much as possible to organize your data. And in fact, they call it a networked outliner. So if I want to indent this, I just press on the tab key and it indents. Or if I do shift tab, it outdents. And another thing that you can do with this here is you can hide bits. So there I've hidden that section and I can press on that little triangle there to bring it back into view again. Now when you're using this application, you can connect any block, which is a bullet point in your document, to another page or block. The idea behind this is to take you away from the hierarchical type of thinking where you've got folders within folders and notes within folders and so on. Instead of having your information and data filed away in these notes, you have a network of links connecting where there is a logical connection. And you don't have to worry about any sort of structure because using this application, a structure will emerge as you start putting your notes in. Another way of putting in these things is to use the forward slash and this gives you access to this list of possibilities so you've got your page reference you've got your page embed you've got your block reference and block embed a uh, block embed is a block within one of the other documents so if i go for block embed here and basically start typing in what i want to put in there so looking for javascript again and maybe i want to put in uh, something that in from this block here so maybe I'll put that block there now that will be embedded. You don't see anything there yet, but as soon as I click off that, you'll see that is actually embedded into this document. So sometimes you want to have stuff embedded and sometimes you want to have links to it. So this time let's go back in again and instead of doing a block embed, let's do a page reference. 
So let's go for JavaScript again. What I can do is I can do a new page on Java, or I can use JavaScript factories or JavaScript constructors. Let's go for constructors. And so there you go. I've got another link in there. So as soon as you click off it, you can go back to it again. It will pop up when you're hovering over it, and you can then click through to the actual document itself. You can go backwards and forwards through your documents here by using the arrows at the top here or use command open square bracket or command and close square bracket to move forwards and backwards. Let's go back in and use the forward slash and I can get to other things as well such as putting a link in there to a web page of some sort or other or I can put images in there with an image link. Okay so I can do an underline, I can use a template, templates are good, I'll show you those shortly. So here we can upload an asset such as a PDF document or a Word document. Or I can put in a headline. So as you see now, it's got the uh, hashtag in there. One hashtag on its own is going to be a um, header one. If you want to have uh, headers and stuff like that, you don't have to go through that forward slash. You can do it by just typing in the uh, markdown syntax. Let's just go back to the forward slash thing again and see what else we can put in there. And I can put a date in there. So if I want the date in there for tomorrow, here we go. And that will link through to page that's set up for tomorrow. So you've got a date picker as well. Or I could put the current time in there if I want to. Forward slash again. And we can go to stuff here to do with tasks. Um, we've got priorities that you can put in there. And we can do advanced stuff like queries. I don't know what this Zotero is. It's some sort of note-taking type of thing. And I can put a calculator in there. Or I can embed HTML. I can embed YouTube videos, uh, YouTube timestamp. Vimeo videos, embedded Twitter tweet. So that's some of the basic ways of getting stuff into the application, which makes it rather easy to use, which is kind of nice. Now then, the basics of this. In Logstack, it's a collection of notes, and it's called a graph, and basically as a database of your notes. And they call it a graph because there's that view of the um, dots that are showing on the screen there with lines in between where there's links, and it's a bit sort of graph-like, I suppose. You can open an existing directory or folder, and you can also create a new one. Whether you choose an existing folder or you create a new one, what happens is that it goes in there and it will create three folders. One for your journals, one for your pages, and another one which stores the configuration and some metadata. Like I said, it's possible to open up a folder already containing Markdown files. So this is good if you've got data that's already in Obsidian, so that's all Markdown, you can use that. It's also possible to have data synchronization with Logsec, so for that I've done it with iCloud. My experience of that so far is that it's not particularly good. I was putting in some data on a page in the iOS application, and when I got back home to my Mac, I found it just wasn't there. In the future, Logsec is going to have paid for extra, which will sort of do the synchronization for you through the Logsec servers. Okay, so you've got your forward slash there for creating links, but you can also create links using the hashtag. Uh, instead of having a hashtag and then a space and then you've got your headers, then you've got this way of doing it where you do a hashtag and then it's telling you that you can search for a page. So let's uh, move down this one here. I can select this page here, movies watched. And as you can see, it's what it's done is put in those square brackets in there as well because it's got a space in between the two words. As soon as there's a space in between words, it'll automatically use that syntax where you've got the square brackets. If it's a single word on its own, let's do the hashtag again and go for uh, motorbike this time. This is just one single word on its own for the title of the page, and that links to that page. So from here, what I can do is I can click on this one here, and it takes me through some page on motorbikes. Now, another thing you can do is have templates. Now, this, temp this one here, I've got a template for a book. So let's just click on this one here and see what I've got in this template. So in this template, the way it works is, is that you write the word template and then put in two colons after that, and then you give it the name. So this one here is called book. Then you put the things into the template that you want in there. So I've got a title, author, rating, review, if I got it from Kindle Unlimited and so on. So that is my uh, template for a book. And in journals, we'll go to this one here, and the book I'm reading at the moment is called Time. Through the forward slash, I start typing the word for template, and it's going to start bringing the uh, list up here. So I've got template, and then it gives me the option to choose a template, and I'm going to use book. Now I've got the title, so it's going to be uh, that one there, so it's called Time. Um, the author is um, whoever. So as soon as I click off that there, you'll see that it actually sort of uh, has all the details in there, okay? 
And again, with this here, you can do stuff like, for instance, you might want this here to be in bold, so I can do Command B to make that in bold. And it puts in the markdown syntax on either side of that word there to make it bold. Or what you can do is you can just type in the uh, things if you wanted to do it that way. So if I put a single star there and then put a single sort of star at the end of it, that's going to turn that into italics. And also with templates, what you can do is let's go for another template. Let's go for um, templates and go for movie this time. And what I did was use a code to programmatically put in the date for today as soon as the template is used. So let's go back into templates and I'll show you how that works. So in this one here, you can see I've got this uh, date in here. Look, let's click on that there. And if you use this syntax where you've got the lower than symbol, percentage, the keyword today, and then followed by this at the end here, it means that that's going to come in there programmatically with the date of today. So this is a quick overview of Logsec. This is Dave Allen for Good and Geeky. And I'm going to make some more videos showing you how to do more advanced things with Logsec. Bye-bye now. Talk to you again soon.